Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at how to uh, interpret a word problem and apply a linear function uh, to it. For a detailed analysis of the concepts behind this, take a look at a very similar problem, almost identical. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. For this one, I'm going to run through it a little quicker, all right, so I can get to more videos. So um, it says, for the following exercises, consider this scenario. A town has an initial population of 75,000. It grows at a constant rate of 2,500 per year for five years. Find the linear function that models the town's population P as a function of the year T. Now what that means is basically that P has to equal some whole bunch of mumbo jumbo blah 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 blah, blah, blah with a T in it. Okay, that's what that means. <laughs> so don't say that to your teacher professor though. So does that, what, what is it, doesn't this mean that we just need a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo here multiplied by the T? He or she is going to say, um, sure. So what we need to do here is we need to now figure out uh, a linear uh, model. And the reason why I'm going to use a linear model here, y is equal to mx plus b, is because they told us, take a look over here on the right, that it grows, meaning it changes, at a constant rate. Now in this problem they were nice because they told it to us explicitly that it was constant. In the other problem I'm referencing you... Uh, two in the description below. It wasn't stated explicitly, but that's why you need to do many problems and do much practice so you can see the different way that these problems are phrased. And then you will become an expert problem solver. So, um, okay, so what we need to do here is instead of calling this Y, we're going to call it now the population, all right, the town's population P. And instead of using an X here, that's going to become the new T, okay? So we have M times T now, plus b. I put it in the parentheses just to differentiate it from the plus sign because it might start to look similar. So now what we need to do is we need to now find in any linear equation, you need to know the slope and you need to know the y-intercept in order for this to be a valid equation. So the slope, remember, always represents the change, the change per time, right? So they're telling us the change, the rate of change here is 2,500 per year, okay? Per year. So I could probably plug that value on in for my slope, 2,500. Now, the <clears throat> uh, plus, then what am I doing? Plus the y-intercept now. So the y-intercept always represents the starting value. So you have to think about, you know, what is this? What's the value? It, and, and when I say start value, you might say, well, what, what start? The time start? The, it's a good question. The population start. Okay, the y start. This b represents the starting value of y. So in this problem, it says an initial population. Oh, doesn't that sound like start, right? This problem's really nicely phrased. So it starts at 75,000. So that's the starting value. So 75,000. And boom, there you go. There's your linear model. You can test it on out, right? You can test it on out if you want to start plugging in some times here and see if the answer for the population makes sense based on the logic of the question. Okay, I find that a lot of times, myself included, when I was younger, um, I'd like to still think I'm young, um, but when I was, you know, a toddler, um, I also had trouble kind of interpreting stuff like this. And I, when I, whenever I read the problem, I could always kind of figure out the answer, but then to put it into like a math equation, I was like, oh man, this is so confusing. You know, how do I do this? Practice, 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 seeing it done. Okay, that is the key. There is no shortcut around it, all right? Hopefully explaining it well helps too and start making some connections, but there, there, will, there is no shortcut to practice. Think about anything great achieved in life. It doesn't happen without a lot of time and practice. So if you want to become great at it, you got to spend the time, all right? There are certain people with natural abilities, sure, 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 sure. But most of us, like myself, don't have that. So you just got to commit time. No big deal. So... Next one, find a reasonable domain and range. So now domain, remember, is basically the list of possible x values, okay? A function can obtain. In this problem, we're calling t x. So what's the range of time? Well, the, the, the time frame of the problem is going to be five years time, right? Because that's what they're kind of telling us, that uh, we're, we know a certain rate of change in the number of people for only five years. What happens after the five years? Who the heck knows? Maybe the population stops growing. Maybe it declines. Maybe it increases at a faster rate. 
but the only thing we do know is for the five years. So therefore, the time value will start at zero. Think about if I plugged in zero for this, this whole term cancels, and then the population at time zero was 75,000, and wait a minute, isn't that the initial population? Sure it is, right? That's how that makes sense. And then the time can go all the way up to five years. If I were to plug in five, I would take five and multiply it by 25, right? 100, that would become about 12,500. I'd add 12,000 to 500 to this value, and that would be 87,500. So that would be the future population. So hopefully that kind of makes a little sense. Now, so uh, therefore now, since I know basically the minimum and the maximum, aka the domain, of the t values or the x values, I can now begin to write it. So put in your t, put in the lower bound to the left, so t is greater than zero, I'm reading it from right to left, and then t will be a less than or equal to, I'm now reading it from left to right, five. There's your domain, simple enough. Now, let's plug in, I thought it was gonna move through this faster, but it wound up not um, <laughs> as fast, but still take a look at that other problem. I promise it'll help. Um, by the way, I explain these problems in different ways, especially if I start getting the same question over and over again. And the reason why I do that is because I don't know you personally who's watching this video. I'd like to get to know you, but I don't know yet who you are. I don't know how you learn. So what I like to do is I like to kind of hedge my bets, so to speak. I don't necessarily teach the same concept the same way all the time, because maybe another method might connect better with you. So if you're watching a video and you feel like, ah, oh, this is a little confusing, and I have another video that's available that's very, very similar, chances are, I'm not saying always, because i got to going to be thinking, <laughs> and uh, sometimes I don't always think, but um, uh, chances are that uh, I did a very identical problem in a slightly different way. All right? Check, check that out. I bet you one way will connect. So the range is known as the Y values. Some concepts, though, remember that I, I can't really change. It's kind of just like, hey, this is what it is. There might not be too many ways to view it. But I do try on the, uh, on the majority of cases like this one. I think I explained this problem like in three different ways now. So, and who knows? There might be more. So this is the range of the list of possible Y values. And in this problem, we're calling that P. So what's the minimum and maximum Y value, basically, right? So the it sounds like the minimum Y value would be 75,000. Well, why is that the minimum? Well, wait a minute, the population's growing. So if it starts at 75,000 and it grows, isn't that going to be the minimum? Sure it is, right? So the minimum value, so P can range anywhere from, ha, 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 range, right? No pun intended or pun intended, I don't know. So P can range anywhere from 75,000. And the maximum P value can be, well, you might say the maximum would be after five years' time. What the heck is that going to be? Guess what? Plug in five here. Five for time, just like I said before. If you plug it in, I'm going to double check my calculation, like I said in the calculator um, that I said before, because it's kind of a little early. Uh, so, you know, yeah, 87,500, just like I mentioned before. All right. So 87,500. Good thing my brain is functioning. So this would be 75,000. Put in your P now, and it works out to be the same way as what we did before. See? Easy peasy. That's the range. Okay, if this thing is now graphed, find and interpret the x and the y-intercepts. So if you had to graph this thing, you always start with the y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is about 75,000. So you plot 75,000 and put a little dot there. All right, the population is going to grow. So let me, let me put this down here a little bit, okay? And by the way, this is not going to be to scale. All right, 75,000. After one year of time, the population will increase by 2,500. In other words, this value should go up to 77,500. So let's assume now that it goes up to 77,500. And you might now begin to see this, we would get this kind of trend, right? And I'm going to just draw a little straight line and that should be fine. Okay, in five years time, we'd be at some value, you know, here's the point at five years in time, we'd be some value up here we would be at about the 87,500, okay, et cetera. So it says interpret the X and the Y intercepts. We already interpreted the Y intercept. I mean, the Y intercept is the starting population. It's the initial population. It's the 75,000, right? So the Y intercept is the starting population. Good, done. The uh, X intercept now, so if we had to kind of, you know, extend this on backwards a little bit, the x-intercept now is going to happen some point in negative time, right? So I can use my linear function, p is equal to 2,500 times the time plus the 75,500. And what I want to do is I want to find, at this point, I know the y-coordinate. The y-value is 0, right, at that point. 
So it has some, it has some uh, popul uh, excuse me, it has some time value, but the population value p is zero. So I'm going to plug in zero there. And now notice I have one equation with one unknown. I love that because I can solve it. Subtract the 7,500 over to the left, so therefore it's negative 75, not 7,500, 75,000 is going to be equal to 2,500 times time. Divide both sides by 2,500. And what do we get? We get 30. Okay, so the t is 30. And by the way, it's negative 30, right? The way the signs are working, so negative 30 years, right? Now, interpret this. I don't know what the interpretation of it will be. Um, they only told me the growth rate starting at 75,000 for, f and it says that this growth rate is for five years. You know, could we say that the population started uh, 30 years ago, that this population originated 30 years ago in the past? Well, it only would be the case if this constant trend had continued all the way on backward from, from the time we're analyzing it all the way back to 30 years prior. It, otherwise, it, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know, so this is also another kind of lesson here in terms of be careful in terms of what they call extrapolating. Extrapolating information from a function. Functions are very helpful, but the functions are only very helpful over the specified time period. What happens after five years or before this five-year period, we don't really know because we weren't given information about it. So be careful. Uh, next question, if the function p is graphed, find and interpret the slope of the function. So this is going to be relatively straightforward. I'm not going to graph it again because we can just huh, copy it and paste. And now we know the slope. Remember, this, this function was graphed according to uh, this linear function, right? This is the linear function. So I'll just copy that, plug it on in here. So what's the slope of that function? We already talked about it. It's going to be the 2500. That represents the change, right? And represents the change in what? Well, it represents the change in the population over the change in time. This was the y value and this was the x value, right? So this is the amount that the population is changing every single year. Notice the value is positive. And what that means is that the value of the population over time must be increasing because the change is a positive change. The population is growing, all right? So I think that's good for that. <laughs> so now, next question is when will the output, whenever they talk about output, they mean y value. Remember in this problem, we are calling y the population. So when will the out uh, when will the output uh, reached when will the output reach what the heck's going on with the <laughs> so many typos when will the output reach uh, one hundred thousand um, so so uh, this is another benefit of a linear function in that we can now solve this very very quickly all right so now well here's the thing we can solve this very quickly. <laughs> I don't think they mean to do this stuff, honestly, um, because, <laughs> uh, yeah, typo. Anyway, this is part of the frustration with some of these problems. Um, so when will the pop? When will the output reach a hundred thousand? Right. So let's just do this for a second. Watch. Let's pretend this linear function applies. We plug in then the hundred thousand for the population, and we then can solve for now the time. All right, subtract the 75,000 on over to the left. So that means we would get 25,000 now over there. That equals 2,500 times time, and t will equal 10 years. Now, notice they only told us information. It grows at a constant rate uh, of 2,500 per year for just five years. But we're saying that, remember, I literally just talked about this. Be careful in terms of extrapolating, okay? So if we extrapolate now, if we go past this five-year point in time, Will this be linear and be the same slope? I don't know. Maybe it'll be an exponential change. Maybe the population is going to sharply decrease. Maybe there's a COVID pandemic and, right, we get we get some change. Maybe not, not go. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully the population doesn't go like that because that would be, right? But there'll probably be some decrease now in the rate, okay? So, you know, the, uh, the when will it reach? Uh, according to my linear model, it'll reach 10 years, but you only gave me a linear model for five years, so I'm guessing that this might apply uh, for the five years after the five years, um, but I don't really know if it does or not. So, yeah, I, that might be the answer, but I would disagree because we don't know enough information. Anyway.
Next one. What is the output in the year in the year 12 years from now from the onset of the model? Oh my god. So again, similar problem. They only give us something for five years. I guess we are to assume that it applies after the five-year period, but why wouldn't they just tell us that? I don't really know. Anyway, I'm just going to do the problem out. So what is the output, meaning the Y value? In this case, we're solving for P. So P is equal to 2,500 times T plus 75,000, right? 2,500 times the 12 plus then 75. Thousand because this is the number of years. So I literally just plug in the number of years. That's the benefit of the model. But remember, the model really should only be applied for five years, but they want us to apply for 12. So go figure. And it's going to be about 105,000. Okay. If that model were to be accurate in that period of time, but who the heck knows? I don't know. All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I Hopefully that helped. And uh, hopefully you realize that uh, some of these problems are not exactly uh, straightforward. And if you really think about the problems, um, you know, sometimes explaining them are difficult because they don't make sense. But that's what we're working with. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please help us out. And if you can subscribe, we really try to put in a ton of effort here. Um, I hope it shows. Try to putting out a bunch of content for you guys. Be patient. Um, we are literally working every free second we have of basically every single day um, when we're not with students. So, um, you know, we're definitely doing our best. So we appreciate it very much. If, you know, I earned your subscription, please hit that subscribe button or a like, and I'll see you soon. Take care.